Hi everyone, how's it going? How are my fellow TIs doing? I hope you guys are well. Um, first off, I want to say a condolences, a very deep, very deep condolences to a TI who recently lost their dog due to electronic torture on the dog. Um, it was a small dog as well, so I I really feel for the person who lost their pet due to this torture. Um, so my condolences to them. A second reason why I've made this video today is that I was asked to be a witness to a meeting between another targeted individual and a psychiatrist that they were seeing. Long story short, there was an inciting incident that led to the target being sectioned and led to the target being put on prescription. OK, so that there was an inciting incident. My problem is this. My problem is that this person has been put on medi on put on injections for five years. Now I cannot imagine any mental illness that would need that would need somebody to be put on injections for five years. Now this person has done the same thing that I've been doing. This person has talked about their neighbors um, and explained with evidence what their neighbors have been doing so they've done the same thing that i've done they've explained the situation to their uh, about their neighbors they've also talked about um Sertzit Zung and the fact that community stalking has happened before they've talked about the directed energy weapons in my case i had like decades of research behind me from other eminent experts and scientists and all that type of stuff and you know, she she has evidence of being a target because she has been scanned for chips. Um, there are chips in her body. And, you know, she also has video evidence of corruption from the psychi from the psychi psychiatric institutions that she's been involved in from where she is. So she's the one with all the evidence. She's the one who has the evidence of being chipped. She has evidence of psychiatry lying and basically doing whatever they can to keep her drugged up against her will she has evidence of assault and battery and kidnapping she has evidence of all the crimes that have been committed against her the ones who do not have the evidence that what she's saying is is delusional or the ones who don't have the evidence are the guess what the ones in psychiatry they have no evidence all it would take for somebody to be as you know to be assessed is for somebody to be reported to emergency services 20 times a year everything about psychiatry is based on speculation anybody can lie go to emergency services and say that person's having a breakdown it was done to me when i was doing a ritual I was literally just just doing my little thing. It wasn't even one of those rituals where there's like like a fucking upside down pentagram on the floor. It was literally just a simple it was simple manifestation work, right? It was nothing big. I was called I had emergency services called on me because I was doing this simple thing in my living room. So all somebody has to do is lie. They don't have to be they, they don't have to be factual. They don't have to be um you know, they can just lie through their teeth and get somebody assessed. So the whole institution of psychiatry itself is based on speculation and hearsay and not evidence. I've spoken about this before. There have been brain scans where they can properly ascertain the areas of the brain that are lacking, areas that cause depression, that cause anxiety, that even cause schizophrenia. All of those things can be picked up via CAT scans and even more importantly, MRI scans. They can ascertain exactly where the brain damage is. And from there, they can correctly ascertain exactly what type of mental illness somebody has. And then on top of that, you can also do MRI scan on the on everywhere else too. You can do MRI scans on the organs. They've got x-rays for the bones, but you can do MRI scans for the organs. Because it's also organ failure that can cause mental illness as well. But they're not going to do any of that. All they do is rely on hearsay. Like 20 reports a year. As long as those 20 reports a year keep coming. That person is going to continuously be, ass continuously be assessed. It doesn't matter whether it's a lie or not. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's how they do it. That's how targeted individuals are kept down by the system. And that's how their evidence becomes diminished in court. Because it doesn't matter whether somebody else, it doesn't matter whether they actually have evidence of something that's going on. There is protocol to follow. And our governments have been using these loopholes in order to have anybody revealing their corruption locked up indefinitely and drugged up with these opiates so that the victims of their abuse cannot function. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that's exactly what's happened to um, the fellow TI that I was a witness for today, only with this TI... This TI has written several books. They are um, prolific in an area of interest that they have been engaged in for decades. So this person is completely active, um, has been engaged in lots of different work for decades now. So this person is not the type of person to rest on their laurels and sit around feeling sorry for themselves. They're constantly active. But even though they're constantly active, even though they have evidence of their targeting, even though they have decades of research from other eminent experts behind them, because psychiatry, because gang stalking basically has an unlimited budget, the psychiatry, psychiatry becomes the henchman of the gang stalkers. That's essentially what psychiatry becomes because gang stalking has an unlimited budget. Remember, we're talking about experimentation into surveillance technology, defense weaponry and pharmaceuticals. That carries a lot of fucking money. So because this person, this fellow TI, doesn't have the money to be able to contest these people, these people get away with not only lying but lying badly. I sat in on that meeting and had to listen to this idiot basically saying, well, you know, I keep her on the ejections because I don't agree. I said, it doesn't matter if you agree or not. Do you have evidence of what you're saying or not? Because she does. The TI that you're speaking to, the TI that has talked about Havana syndrome, they have evidence in their corner. You don't have evidence. You don't have evidence that everything that this person's talking about is a delusion. You have nothing. You have nothing except speculation. And I don't agree. And with that speculation and I don't agree, you're making life or death decisions. And that's exactly what I told him. I said, you can't be out here making life or death decisions when you have nothing but speculations and the lying word of the same people that are harassing her to go on. Surely you realize that. And not even that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you, okay? There is an expert that I've spoken about for a while now. They're XMI five, right? XMI five, and they were an expert in active denial systems and long range acoustic devices in the Cold War. That same person that I've been talking about, they were helping this TI out. They wrote a letter to to the psychiatry saying. I can vouch for this person. They are not crazy. These weapons exist. Mm -hmm. Even with the word of an ex-MI5 agent who has seen these weapons for themselves, even with the evidence that this targeted individual has been chipped and has been scanned for chips, even with decades of research and evidence behind this TI, the psychiatrist is still able to sit there reading off a script basically comfortably lying saying well I don't agree as if that fucking matters so this person is making huge assumptions that not only is this person mentally ill not only is the TI mentally ill but that they're you know they're delusional about targeting I said to the psychiatrist that's a huge assumption that's a huge assumption notice how I said assumption and not and not deduction, because that's not a deduction. You have nothing. You have absolutely nothing. How much research have you actually done into this person's story? Fuck all. And you trying to fucking, you know, trying to palm me off with this whole thing of, oh, you know, these, these technologies aren't advanced yet. Yeah, because they're NHS, motherfucker. 
But there have been technologies out there that have been able to scan the brain for significant damage that can cause mental illnesses. There have been, there's been the technology out there. We already have MRI scans that can give full body, full body organ scans that can ascertain exactly where the organ damage is. Don't play me. Don't try and play me like that. And the fact that you've had this person on injections for five years when they have all this evidence behind them and experts behind them. That's all I got to say. This person, this TI that I, I was a witness for, they brought up Dr. Hoffer from Miami. You know what the psychiatrist did? The psychiatrist tried to act like the TI was stupid. You see, this is why as a targeted individual, when you are dealing with psychiatrists and when you're dealing with experts, it's important to keep the details small, meaning keep the details of what you observe limited. Do not talk about anything out of the way. Do not talk about anything outside the realm of possibility. When I talk about directed energy weapons, I bring up Lockheed, I bring up Raytheon, I bring up companies that already have this technology out there. I bring up the fact that the police have already used crowd control, crowd control weapons, frequency weapons, the same ones being experimented on us. I bring up the voice of God technology. I keep everything that I say within the realms of possibility. I keep everything that I say as being things that have already been proven. I learned my lesson from the last time I dealt with mental health. It is so important. And, and you stay within this country, like keep everything as small as possible when it comes to the facts. Keep everything as small and close to the situation as possible. Because this TI didn't do that and they brought up Dr. Hoffer from Miami, who is an expert in basically the effects of gang stalking, because she brought him up, right, um, this psychiatrist basically turned around to her and tried to make out like she was fucking crazy and she was stupid. We can't bring in somebody from Miami. I had to step in and say, you know, down well, that's not what she meant. You know, that's not what she meant. She's saying that she, there are experts out there that know about everything that she's talking about. And I also brought up the fact that there was a pharmacist who had to appeal her case to psychiatry and say, I am a victim of Havana syndrome. I, I wish I could remember this pharmacist's name because I got that from another source. So I got, I got to talk to this person, Winnie, but <laughs> listen, somebody needs to. Somebody needs to shut this shit down. But anyway, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so I can't remember now. So this, this person that, you know, this psychiatrist was basically talking about how, oh my God, my, my memory's gone now. My memory's gone. So, this, you know, the TI brought up something from Miami. They brought up the expert, Dr. Hoffer from Miami. And what they, did, what they did essentially was try to treat the TI as stupid. And what I was explaining was that you have to keep the detail small and within your immediate environment and stick to short answers as well. That's what you have to do in dealing with them because they have a script given to them by the people responsible for our targeting they have a script that they have to stick to. So the only way for you to actually get around that script is for you to question them on their beliefs and for you to question them on whether or not they have evidence. You've seen my recordings of meetings that I've had with mental health. You have to throw their questions back at them because at the end of the day, they can't just turn around and say, you've got paranoid schizophrenia, come up with 5,000 different diagnoses to describe you and they don't even have evidence that what you're saying is not correct. In fact, the psychiatrist during that meeting that I had with the TI, he oscillated between believing the harassment was real and not believing the harassment was, was real. So basically, on the one hand, he's talking about the fact that none of this harassment exists. And then on the other hand, he's basically turning around and saying to this TI, 
well, you know, ignoring them is the best option. First of all, for anybody who's familiar with narcissistic abuse knows that's bollocks. The more you ignore a narcissist is the nastier they get. The only thing that works with a narcissist is if you completely fucking crush their spirit to the point where they won't go near you. But because many TIs are not built like that, we're not built to try to crush people's spirit like that. We're not built like that. The narcissist will always come back. It doesn't matter how sassy we get. It doesn't matter how, how educated we are. It doesn't matter how much we ignore them. It doesn't matter how much um, we run to other authorities because the other authorities are basically putting, up to, putting them up to it in the first place. It doesn't matter how much we do that. The narcissist will continue. The only thing that works with them is if you completely destroy them because they're not going to get it. Now, from the perspective of understanding antisocial personality disorders, this isn't me saying that, you know, these people are just evil and, you know, there's nothing redeeming about them. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that they genuinely don't get it. They genuinely don't get it and they will keep hurting you. They don't get it because in the, their brain is not working in this in the same way that somebody else's brain will work. They don't fucking get it. So the only thing that's going to work is if we fucking destroy them. And this psychiatrist is basically putting the onus on this TI to ignore them or to let it slide or to get on with their life. This, this TI has been getting on with their lives. When mental health pulled this scam, this is, this is one thing that mental health did. So on top of giving this person injections for five fucking years, right? When this TI missed an appointment because of the flu, this TI tried to call them repeatedly, 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 repeatedly. Mental health did this thing of not answering the fucking phone. Because if she doesn't report the fact that she has flu to psychiatry, and she's not keeping up with their injections, what they will do is they will have her sectioned again. So in order to avoid that, she is the one who had to run behind them for injections that she didn't even want. So they have literally tried everything in their power to degrade her health, to ruin her credibility, to make sure that she has nothing, nothing to go on, even though she's got all the evidence on her corner, she's got all the evidence. They've done everything in their power to try to make sure that she cannot defend herself. Even when she was sectioned, I think I've told you this before, even when she was sectioned, right, she had an appeal. What they did was they doped her up with an injection that ruined her ability to talk. So they let this woman have an appeal in front of mental health professionals while she was sectioned. And um, whilst, they, whilst they did that to her, they made sure she couldn't talk. That's how spiteful these people are. That's how vicious these people are. That's how vindictive these people are. Dope this woman up to the eyeballs to make sure she can't talk. And every single time she has to sit in front of those bastards, she's reminded of the assault that she went through. She reminded of the fact that, you know, her being a tiny little woman, she was forced with her hand behind her back forced to take injections that she didn't want or didn't even need. And another thing is, during the meeting, this psychiatrist really talked out the side of his neck, lied through his fucking teeth and said that the only reason why this targeted individual was getting better was because she was um, taking the injections. I said the injections didn't have shit to do with it. She explained all the health problems that were coming with the injections even with this newer one what that was supposed to be better for her diabetes, not only was it messing with her blood sugar level, it was causing her digestive problems. It was causing her dig digestive problems. And when she had missed the injections, she was taking herbal supplements and the herbal supplements were working. Hear this motherfucker. No, it's the injections that are working. I said, are you in her life from day to day? Are you in her life from day to day? Are you observing how her body works? Are you observing the immediate effects of the injections after she's taken them? Are you there to witness any of that? So how can you maintain the injections are working? He didn't have an answer for me. 
They just maintain that the injections are working. The injections are doing what they need to do. He basically bullshitted his way throughout that entire meeting. Of course, the TI that I was being a witness for, of course, she was getting agitated. I had to calm her down because of his lies. And all he could say was, I don't agree. I don't agree. I said, I don't give a, I, I don't give a damn if you agree or not. The evidence is there of everything that she's been saying. I've gone through the same thing with mental health in the past, with them trying to fucking fob me off and tell me, oh, none of this is real. How much research have you done? Again, look through my videos. I've got recordings of my interactions with mental health professionals trying to make diagnoses that they're not qualified to make. And I've had to, I've had to pull them up. I said, if you are that convinced that I have paranoid schizophrenia, then get an MRI scan, see if you can ascertain um, if there's any damage in the CR1 part of the brain. Oh, we don't have technology for that. Then how do you know which part of the brain is damaged to cause paranoid schizophrenia? How do you know without the scans? What, autopsies? It can't just be autopsies. You have to be able to scan the brain in order to ascertain exactly where the brain damage is to cause paranoid schizophrenia or to cause auditory hallucinations. So where did all this information come from if there are no, there's no technology for it? These people are taking a piss. The CR1 part of the brain causes paranoid schizophrenia. Let's get an MRI scan and let's prove it. Injury to the um, primary auditory complex. I think it's on this side of the brain, but I'm not sure. Brain injury to the primary auditory, um, primary auditory cor cortex part of the brain. Injury to that part of the brain, less gray matter in that part of the brain is what causes auditory hallucinations. Let's get a scan up and let's ascertain exactly what's been damaged. There is a TI called Richard Lovelace right here on Facebook that has got photo evidence or photo evidence of MRI scans or of CT scans showing damage to his brain. All a psychiatrist would need is to get, say, get similar scans to that and to be like, oh, okay, well, this person has this and this according to the scan, but they're not going to scan it. You know why? Because if they scan her body, they're going to find the fucking chips. Now, the chips over time can be covered with fat, gristle, or that type of stuff. It like over time, the body covers them. So over time, when there are chips in your body, the, the frequency gets weaker and weaker. It's there, but it gets weaker because of your body's natural defense, right? So, you know, it, it's, it, I mean, it could still be, it, it might still be able to show up on a scan. I don't know. But what I do know is this, if there's damage to the brain that's causing mental illness, that's going to come up. If there's organ failure that is responsible for mental health issues, that's going to come up too. Remember, I said that one aspect of mental health or mental illness, one mental illness can be caused by attacks to the top of the kidneys where the adrenal glands are. So organ failure can also prove mental health issues. Instead of doing all this speculation and relying on lion ass people to fucking get people locked up and in psychiatric units, get fucking scans. That's the easiest thing in the world to do. But no, they'd rather not do that. And there's a reason why they'd rather not do that. Because the injuries from the microwave weapons, from the active denial systems, from even the long range acoustic devices, all the evidence would be right there on those scans of everything that we were talking about my gp over here in wooding dean even fucking lied at one point i've got that in my medical records my gp over here even fucking lied and said there was no damage here two years before that two years before that assessment my dentist was fucking worried about the damage that was here they were worried do you understand? So we already know we have all the evidence. Like a lot of mouth breathers are going to turn around and say, prove it. We've been proving it, bitch. We've been over here proving it. We just don't have an unlimited budget to tell lies with. 
And that was exactly this TI's problem. They don't have an unlimited budget to lie with. And it wouldn't be so bad if the psychiatrists were even good at lying. But they are so fucking mediocre at lying. They can't lie to save their fucking lives. And yet life and death decisions are made based on their so-called findings every single day. And I know what some people are going to say. Well, some people are genuinely sick. Yeah, that just makes this worse. Because people who are genuinely sick, they're not getting the help that they're supposed to get to the point where people are killing themselves. They're not getting... People who are genuinely sick, they're not going to get the help they're supposed to get for the same reason. How do you treat mental illness as chemical but you don't ascertain exactly where the chemical damage is. You can't just feed people dopamine blockers and have done. You have to understand exactly which parts of the brain are damaged so that you can treat that damage and treat and correct the chemical imbalance. That's how you fucking do it. You don't just feed people opiates and leave them to their own devices. And this TI maintains that they're not mentally ill. Listen, I'm going to be real with you about the situation. I'm going to be real right now. I have mental illnesses. I've had mental illnesses since I was young. This is not, I'm not, I'm not new to this and true to this. I've had mental illnesses since I was young. But at the end of the day, if mental illnesses can be synthesized by torture, caused by prolonged torture, and that prolonged torture is not only not investigated, but it is inflicted continuously on multiple groups of people, then how would mental illness even disprove gang stalking anyway? It doesn't disprove gang stalking. If anything... Mental illness is caused by trauma. So where the fuck did the mental illness come from? That has to be accounted for. If you're going to understand and genuinely treat mental illness, then you have to understand when the, where the mental illness actually comes from and stop doing this hokey standard shit of saying, well, what was your childhood like? Get the fuck off that. Find out where the trauma is. Find out where the trauma actually is and find out what caused it. But no, people don't want to do that. They want to give chemical solutions to something that they believe is psychosomatic, that they make out like it's psychosomatic. These psychiatrists, they don't know their ass from their elbow. The whole time I was sitting there during the meeting, all he had to say was, I don't agree, I don't agree, I don't agree, I don't agree. The injections made you better. No, they fucking didn't, bitch. The TI made herself better. In spite of you, she, he, he's trying to make out like, oh, the injection, the TI didn't get better because of the injections. They got, be they got better because of the injections. I said, no, they didn't. I've been there. I've witnessed everything. You haven't been there. You haven't witnessed anything. You're just talking out of your ass. But we are the ones with the evidence. All the people talking about your paranoid schizophrenic, you do, yeah, they, they ain't got evidence to go by. All they have is unlimited money and unlimited bullshit. And narcissists to spare. And this is the thing about narcissists. And I've said it for years, right? Narcissists are the type of people that are sitting in a car with no fucking wheels and they think they're flying a jet engine. They think they're smarter than they are. And because they think they're smarter than they are, it's easy to let... The fucking, um, you know, paranoid schizophrenia, delusional shit slide out of their mouths because they think they're smarter than they are. The only thing they know is to collect, know how to do is collect money. They can't even lie straight. They can't even lie straight. So for me, madness is, it ain't got shit to do with mental illness. Madness is when people walk around with their unresolved trauma and they inflict it on someone else. That's madness. And the majority of TIs who are slandered deliberately, they're slandered 
not, you know, I mean, people might have fun slandering them, but that's not the reason why we're being slandered. We're being slandered to affect our admissibility in court and to drag out our pain for as long as possible so that by the time we do get a little bit of justice, the juice ain't worth the squeeze. That's what they're doing this for. And also when it comes to the population, this is a controlled demolition, but that's for another time. So yeah, during this meeting, summary, they came to this. Uh, the psychiatrist basically had weak arguments. They said, I don't agree over and over again. They tried to rewrite reality by saying the injections were helping when the injections were not helping. And they tried to say that, you know, ignoring people harassing you was going to make them stop harassing you. And they tried to make out like the injections were just suddenly going to make the gang stalking go away. Again, that's exactly the same tactic that they tried to do to me and they tried to do to other TIs. And another thing that I want to bring up is, you know, this psychiatrist is so stupid. When I talked about the pharmaceutical expert that basically had to be recognized as a Havana syndrome after all, um, I said that this person had to sit in front of psychiatric experts and basically tell tell their story and the reasons why they believe they are a Havana syndrome victim and they had evidence behind them. And he's he's going over it, he's going to say, who is they? Who is they? I said, it's a TI motherfucker. Are you deaf? I said, it's an expert pharmacist. You deaf? I said, I can't remember their name. Are you deaf? Motherfucker, are you deaf? Are you stupid? And this is exactly what I'm talking about when I say they rely on the same script over and over again. Dumb, just fucking slow. But it's okay because there are court cases being won. As far as I know, one other TI has facilitated in about six court cases being won so far with regards to this. And we already have Jane Cliff's story. So I'm going to link Jane Cliff's story. I'm going to link a previous video of mine or previous videos of mine that explained why the paranoid schizophrenia argument doesn't work, why the auditory hallucinations that things don't work because they can easily be caused by trauma in the brain and trauma in the brain can literally be caused by anything, including directed energy weapons. So the mental health argument doesn't fly either. So I'm going to leave links to those videos. And as for the fellow TI that I was a witness for today, I'm sorry that I couldn't do. I'm sorry that I couldn't do justice to the conversation that took place. Um, and I'm sorry that I couldn't help get you off those fucking injections. I'm really sorry that I couldn't help to get you off them. You know, because that was the purpose of me being there and I couldn't, I couldn't prevent that. And I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Um, at the same time, because I've been in a similar situation, it affects my admissibility in court as well as a witness. So you know, I can do the best that I can and I can be, it doesn't matter how intelligent I am. It doesn't matter how well I can argue my way out of a room with no doors. And it doesn't matter how much I know about neurology more than psychiatrists do. I don't have an unlimited budget behind me. Not yet. So I'm limited in what I'm able to do, but at least I try to help this TI out and that's not going to be the only time that I'm going to help another TI out. That's not going to be the only time. So, anyway, um, I just want to think. Is there anything else? Is there anything else? Yeah, I think that's it for now. So, I'm going to love you guys and leave you. I'm going to leave the links to the other videos that I mentioned. Um, they're up on YouTube, so I'm going to leave a link to those. Um, and I'm sorry that, like, my storytelling is kind of all over the place. But then again, when you're dealing with truth tellers, <laughs> their, their, their details tend to be all over the place. So forgive me. All right. But you guys take care of yourselves. Peace and blessings. I love you so much, my fellow TIs. 
And once again, let me know in the comments how you guys are. Stay strong. And once again, my condolences to the TI who lost their dog. Take care. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.